church, a revival that will touch the nations of the world is beginning right here with the people you have in this church right now. They're the ones you're going to use, Lord. Put a fire in our hearts and a desire for you. Father, we pray too in Jesus' name. For those who are sick in our church, we especially pray for Mrs. Mrs. Taylor, Mr. McGuffey, Mary, Mr. Baker. Father, we pray for Ms. Williams, here, Harry. We pray for the Victor family, especially Mrs. Victor, that you would touch her and comfort her. Father, we pray for all our church family. We pray for Kitty. We pray for those who are sick, Brother Damien. Lord, you know all who are not feeling well. Oh God, we remember each one in our prayers every day. Keep our church healthy and strong. And Lord, bless this church. Bless this service. Let no man be exalted. Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've been praying for Chelsea. I see she's here. Oh God is the answer of prayer. And y'all forgive me, we didn't pray for souls today because we're going to do that right after this message. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, you know, uh, there's a lot going on, and one of the things that happened to me Thursday, right not Thursday, yeah, Thursday, I had one of those dreams that you can't remember, but you know it was a, it was a terrible dream, and you can't remember it, it's imprinted in your mind. And all through our ministry for years and years, August has been a tough month. It's always been a tough month. We always have this phrase, uh, Leon and Lucinda and I, we all know about it, my children. August 1st is a date. <laughs> we say August 1st is a date. Because August is a month with a long story behind it, but it's always a month of deep prayer and a lot of battles begin. So I want you to understand that we were quite prepared for August not being a month where you just in la-la land. August is a month for great deep prayer. So I, I want you to start that month off. It's holy season for the Jewish calendar begins in September, usually. September and October are really holy months. But August uh, is a month of one, one guy, one preacher I drove a long way to go see. Um, it's a month of flaming torches. So what I want you to do is not be afraid of this month, but pray. Pray like you never prayed. <coughs> pray for your family, your children. And all these troubles and tribulations and trials you run into, I want you to have the attitude that, hey, look, <laughs> God is still on my side. Because he is. We don't understand a lot of things if that's why we're not God. Somebody wants, somebody wants to be God? Fine. I don't understand the things that happen in life. I trust him with them. And I've learned to trust in the Lord over time. So you will do the same, won't they, dear? Hallelujah. <laughs> You know, uh, I want you to turn with me to Revelation 12. And I want to give you a picture of a battle that we've been in, but it's intensifying. And I got that dream. I don't remember. I know it was a battle. All I know is it's time for you and me to volunteer for battle. If you sit back on the sidelines and realize there's a battle raging for souls, and you sit back and you say, well, you know, I'm not worried about my house. I'm okay. Me and my house is serving the Lord, you know. If you ever would have thought if Adolf Hitler would have taken over the world, would your house have been okay just because the battle was in Europe? He was going to take the battle all over the world to Europe, Africa, Asia. That's where he was anyway. And he was trying to come to the United States. Yes. Satan won't stop with just somebody else's house. His battle is increasing. Even if it's your neighbor, your friend, your co-worker, his battle is increasing. But the power of God is in us to defeat him. But you must first be aware that you are in a fight. That's the thing that we seem to not know. I am tickled how we preach and preach and preach how good things are and how good God is. God is always good, but Satan is always bad. The Bible says he came to steal, kill, and destroy. Yes, that's right. Uh, Ephesians talks about don't be ignorant of what he's doing. You know, I mean, Ephesians, are, don't be ignorant of the wiles of the devil. He got schemes, he has plans. From the very beginning, man had it all. 
didn't work for anything. But Satan is a deceiver. He messes with our minds. He messes with my mind. He messes with my mind. That's all the time. That's where uh, one George Myers once said is the battlefield really is. And you study scripture, it's all about deception. It's all about him making you think something is so bad you can't recover. Some sickness is so hard that you won't get better. Some situation is so bad, it, you know. You know, these are people who think that the strength is in them. But if you think the strength is in God, nothing is impossible for him. You can get very disillusioned when it's you. I've been in many battles. And I found out that I can't defeat him in all of them. But God can. Hallelujah. But souls are at stake in these seasons this time we're in. We can look over there at Israel and see what's going on there. You know, it's terrible to be killing children and all of this with no, with no rhyme or reason. But what I want you to see is that you're in a battle worse than that. A battle for souls. Your soul, your children's soul, your friends, your neighbors, your church members. It's a real serious battle going on. Especially for our own souls. And you have to fight the good fight. And I want to read uh, Revelation 12 because... You know, when Jesus died on the cross, he defeated Satan. Yes. Yep. But we, you and I have a problem. <laughs> he's defeated, but he's come down to us. See, he's not where he was with Job's day. Now he's where you and I are. Verse 1 of, of chapter 12 of Revelation. A great and wondrous sign. Y'all see where I am? Yes. And I'm reading out of common English, you know what Appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and a crown of twelve stars on her head. She was pregnant and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. Y'all see where I am? Yes. Mm -hmm. Then another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns on his head. His tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. The dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that he might devour her child. The moment it was born. Mm. She gave birth to a son, a male child, who will rule all the nations with an iron scepter. And her child was snatched up to God and to his throne. The woman fled into the desert to a place prepared for her by God, where she might be taken care of for 1,260 days. And there was war, say war, in heaven. War. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. Mm -hmm. But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place where? In, In heaven. heaven. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, mm -hmm. who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth, and his angels with him. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. That's a war? Yes. Satan has been hurled out of heaven, mm -hmm. but he's on the earth, in the earth. Now, I want you to think about it. When he's, he's the power of the air for a long period of time. You can imagine when he manifests on the earth and start creating havoc here. He's giving us suggestions from his high place, but God is trying to grab hold of our thinking. And he's trying to grab hold to, to, your, to your lifestyle and trying to say, hold on, hold on. Your soul is at stake. There is an enemy loose upon your children, on your family, and on everything that you have. My yes. Lord. You see, you, you, he tries to steal what you have, destroy, yes, and kill. Yes, sir. That's what he came to do. Mm -hmm. And while you're sitting around in La La Land, he's just going about his work. Mm -hmm. If you believe scripture, this is what's happening. Now, if you say, well, I can't blame everything on Satan. No, but he can blame it on wicked people who listen to wicked thoughts. Yes. Come on, sir. He's the master of minds. Mm -hmm. And he'll have you thinking all kinds of things. You know, one thing about your journey of salvation, you know you got to gird up your mind. Because yes. yes. your thoughts are not like his thoughts. Mm -hmm. And your ways are not like God's ways. The more you learn about the Bible, the more you realize, I don't think like God. Mm -hmm. I don't act like God. And I need to learn to be like God. Come yes, on, sir. yes. The more you come to church, the more you're in the Word, the more you realize how much more you have to do mm -hmm. to become more like Him. Mm -hmm. Satan is in a battle, but he starts with your mind. Mm -hmm. 
People like say, it's a devil walking around here with a pitchfork. Is he that red dragon? You know, what he is, is a demon power and, and a world that he can't, that he masters. He masters his earth. When you look in the paper and you begin to see all the wickedness going on and things people are doing to each other and the wars and rumors of wars, that was all prophesied in the Bible. Mm -hmm. There's nothing new under the sun. What's new is, is that you and I need to learn how to fight back. That's what we got to do. Yeah. We can't just stand still. You say, well, well, I just need you for you to go out there and do something. Well, you know, the battle the Bible says is not yours, it's the Lord's. Mm -hmm. What he needs you to do is realize who your enemy is and how to put on the full armor of God and fight him back. Yes. Come on, sir. You see, your weapons are not carnal weapons. And that's where we go wrong. We think we can change this thing with, I've tried, it doesn't work. I believe in the power of prayer. I believe in the power of God to change things. I trust in him. I do everything I can, but I'm going to trust God. Your battle cannot be won by you. It will be won by Almighty God. That's right. And he wants you to come to him and understand that. Yes, it's a terrible battle. A terrible battle. But not just for you, it's for the souls of men. Let me tell you something. If anybody would die today and go to hell and you knew them, and you never told them the truth, how are you going to feel if you knew that? That neighbor you talk about all the time, did you ever think about praying for? You see, we can't hold each other responsible for everything that we do, but I know one thing, we can hold each other responsible for giving the word to everyone we can. It's not up to you to prosper the word, that's the Holy Ghost job. Your job is to make sure you are God's mouthpiece. Hallelujah. You are God's hands. Yes. And you are God's feet. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 You see, when you go out for him, you go out knowing that you're in a battle, not against flesh and blood, the scripture says, but principalities and powers in high places. Yes. You see, that's Ephesians chapter 6. I'm trying not to turn to all the scriptures we're going to go through this week. But I want you to understand that you are in a battle. I didn't know I was in one, and I was being defeated on every side. I was working hard to win my battles, win other people's battles, save my father's life, do all kinds of things that just didn't work out for me. And I had no idea. No one told me, hey, you need to, you need to fight in another way. You need to fight in another way. You've been in a battle. You just didn't know you were in a battle. That's why you were living in sin. That's why your thoughts were the way they were. You didn't know that there was an enemy trying to take away everything you were raised up and taught. My God. You had no idea that he's trying to erase your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Mom and daddy taught you. Your, your, your catechism or your Bible class taught you. But you really just couldn't get it until you were born again. Come your on. eyes were open. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Yes. But this battle has not stopped since you got saved. It actually is intensifying, and that's what Revelation 12 wants you to know. The battle for souls is increasing every day. Yes. Every day. Somebody's child is going to hell. Every day, somebody's mother is going to hell. Somebody's father is going to hell. Every day, it's not over with this life. We would love to think that this life is all there is. You and I know in deep, deepest part of your heart that that is not the truth. Mm -hmm. There is life after death, and it has pretty much been proven. And it's time for you to understand that. Mm -hmm. But this is a great and terrible battle we're in, and you need to sit back and say, God, what do we do in this battle? I want you to go with me to Ephesians 6 for a minute. <clears throat> You say, this is going to be a hard message, Pastor. No, it's not. It's a real message. I want you to know the truth. And the truth will set you free. Remember that message? Yeah. You know, if you don't know the truth, you're going to be a fool like I was. And you're going to be in here in La La Land doing anything you want, not knowing that God is watching and not knowing that people around you are dying. I had friends that died. And I, I can't tell you they ever picked up a Bible or even went to a church. 
But I wouldn't save myself, so I sure couldn't save them. But you are the elect of God if you save. And every day, people are leaving here without you telling them the gospel. Please hang in there with me today. Lord Jesus. Amen. You know, I had such a hard time getting to church today. I know it's not a message Satan wants us to preach. Never would. Every time you preach one like this, it's like it's so hard. But the enemy just fights so hard for you not to understand that you're in a battle. I'm going to tell you, you're going to win all your battles if you're on the right side. So don't get worried and think, you, thank you, man. They think you're going to lose your battle. You ain't going to lose your battle. If you know God's on your side, you're not going to lose it. No, you can't lose it. Okay? Mm -hmm. Ephesians 6 tries to tell us something. <clears throat> and verse 10. It says, finally, you see where I am? Mm -hmm. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. That's the scripture I meant. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, not you, not your armor. Okay, I know you're brilliant and you're smart and you know how to run things, but your armor ain't gonna work. Sooner or later, you're gonna realize all my education and all my abilities and all my money can't win some of my battles. Sooner or later, you're gonna realize there's something greater than you in this world that opposes you. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth. Truth, we preached on that. Buckle around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith we wish you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of this evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. This, none of that seems to be carnal stuff, is it? Mm -hmm. It didn't say your education is going to help you win these battles. Not that spiritual battle, no. It doesn't say your money can win that battle, does it? You can throw all the money you want at some of these battles. So some people raise their children, they figure if I give them everything they want, they'll be good. Come on, Sam. Throw all the money at them. Just keep throwing at them. Look, look at all these children up here saying, throw it at me. <laughs> but how many would get in a battle that money can't get them out? Yep. Come on, Jesus. The Lord said, put on the full armor of God. Yes. That's who you need to fight your battles. Mm -hmm. You look absurd. You look almost silly doing it. But I'm telling you, we have won many battles with the armor of God. Yes. Yes. And you can too. Yes. People in this church have won many battles with the armor of God. Yes. You can't win my battles for me. I need to put some armor on. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. 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 If they don't put it on for themselves, you know, you can intercede. But if they reject the help of God, what can you do? We raise our children and at the best we can, but we need to tell them, look, don't let nobody tell you it's about a horror movie, Satan. No, Satan's not about a horror movie. He's about spiritual wickedness in high places. Yes. Yes. Come on, sir. Yes. Yes. yes, sir. He's not about all that stuff. He's not trying to scare you. He's trying to take your soul. Yes, right. He don't have to come and say, boo. He's working beguiling mm -hmm. with thoughts and arrows. Yes. You need faith to quench yes. the fiery yes. thoughts of the enemy. Hallelujah. You don't have no faith, then he's going to keep shooting. Yes. And you're going to be thinking of all kinds of stuff about yourself and all kinds of things about other people. That's the worst one. Mm -hmm. 
You're thinking about how no, somebody else ain't done something. Somebody else don't think that. You know what? You got an arrow in your head. Mm -hmm. Come on, sir. Teach it. Put the shield of faith. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Quench the fiery darts of the enemy. Yes. Yes. It's, it's not us that's your problem. You have a principality in high places that's trying to destroy not just you, but everybody around you. Yes. Oh, my. Yes, sir. Some dreams are so bad, you don't want to remember them. Mm -hmm. Evil can be so evil, you don't want to think about it. Mm -hmm. But it's getting worse every day, not better in the world. But your refuge is God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you're going to have to run to Him. And you're going to have to learn about Him. And you're going to have to get faith in Him. Yeah. And you're going to start believing Him. You've got to stop trying to do this on your own. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because if you like many of us in this church, you're going to get in a situation you can't do nothing about. My, yep. my, my. Mm. Say that, sir. Then what are you going to do? Those of us who've been in these battles, which each one of y'all been in them, I tell you, you're going to get in some that you say, you know what, only God can help me now. You wonder why God let you go through these trials. He wants you to know. Trust me. Take refuge in me. Yes. Believe in me. Yes. Yes. Don't take matters in your own hand. Trust God. My, my, my. Trust God. Yes. Yes. You know, I've gotten myself to a point where if God don't do it for me, then, it, then I just keep on going. Yes. Not my will, Lord, but thy will be done. Yes. You have to learn to submit to God. You know, one of the things that happened to David, and I got so much, just you just got to bear with me first, is I want to equip you before you leave. To understand that you're in a battle when you leave out of that door. As soon as you walk out of here, everything that I have said, Satan's going to come to take you from. That's scripture, by the way. Mm -hmm. That's not just you. That's all of us in here. Yes. He's working so you won't believe not a word I speak. Yeah. But you know I don't get paid now, church. The only thing I'm going to be accountable for is telling you the truth. Yes. Come on, come on, you know I don't have to sit up here and tell you nothing. I go home. But it's for the love of God and the love of you that I'm up here. Yes, That's sir. the only payment I need. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. So I have too many people saying, he's preaching at me. You know what? That's a good thing. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I hear it all the time. You know, y'all give me way too much credit. I'm not, I don't know nothing but him crucified. Yes, sir. When I'm preaching up here, if it falls on you, that's a good thing. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. That's a good thing. So that's a good thing. That's a good thing. That means I need to listen to what's being said. Yes. Hallelujah. Don't Hallelujah. get mad at me. I'm not going to do nothing but what this word tells me to preach. Yes, if it hurts, then it's a good thing. Yes. You know that old song, it hurts so good? I don't think they were talking about this. Thing. Oh, you know I was out there, don't you? I ain't never lied and said I wasn't. Mm. Took some hard work to get me here. Mm. If he could do it for me, there's nobody in here that he my, can't my, do it for. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. I got to get my brother. My brother just told me the other day, he said, you're just the meanest thing. I said, what? I told my wife that, that I have changed. This boy just cannot accept that I have changed. I'm working on it. One day he's going to say, brother, you have changed. And I know I really have right. <laughs> We're 11 months apart, so. You can imagine, bathe together, slept together, so nobody knows me much better than that. But please listen to me. You are in a battle. Your children are in a battle. Your grandchildren are in a battle. Your, your church is in a battle. We come in here, many of us, and we pray all the time for you. We pray for our church. The women, the ladies pray on Saturdays, interceding for you and your church. Interceding the men on Fridays. We don't care who's here. We pray for our church. Every morning, some of us are praying for you. Every time we come to church, we're praying. Didn't it say pray in all occasions for all the saints, yes. all the time? That's yes. right. If you're in a battle, you do what God says. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you ain't praying for yourself, I guarantee you somebody at church is praying for you. Come yes. on, sir. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Because we understand that we're in a battle for our souls. That's right. It's not going to come easy. It's going to come the way God said it's going to come. He said, be of good cheer. Yeah. He, he's already overcome the world. Yeah. But you will be what? In trouble in this world. Mm -hmm. 
I love that Christianity that says ain't nothing going to happen to me. If it was true. But the good news is, I have the full arm of God. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I can fight the good fight of faith. Yes. But today I want you to think about where you are in Christ. Do you have the armor on? Because I want you to engage your enemy now. I want you to study Ephesians 6 on your own. And I want you to begin to say, you know what? It's time for me to get in this battle. Because sooner or later, it's going to come against my children, my household, my finances. Mm -hmm. Sooner or later, I'd have, I'd have had it too good. Sooner or later, this battle is going to come to my door. Mm -hmm. Sooner or later, I'm going to have to fight if it's just for myself. Yes. So it's best to fight the enemy while he's overseas. Mm -hmm. Ebola. It's best to fight him now in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And understand that by his stripes I am he. Yes. Yes. It's best to know the word now, the sword of the spirit. Yes. It's best to take it out now so your enemy does not overwhelm you. That's right. It's best to trust God now yes. than to wait till trouble comes. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 But for you and me, ask yourself the question, if I'm in a war, why am I not fighting? Money can't win this war. Guns can't win this war. Are you kidding? You can't cop out of this war with alcohol and drugs. It's a waste of time. Yeah, come on, Jesus. You don't have to get in this fight and fight. Yeah. The one thing you're too lazy to really do, some of us, is to sit in church and read our Bible and learn more about God. Mm -hmm. That's the only way you can win this battle. Yeah. yeah. I am shocked at how many people think they're going to live here forever. It's shocking. People live like they're not going to die. But you will. And you better be willing to meet the one that made you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, people, I know this sounds a hard message, but I want you to think hard. Hallelujah. I got to get up off myself and fight in this battle. Yes. Can't take my children, can't take my marriage, can't take my money, Come on, cannot take nothing from me. Yes. I'm going to fight the good fight of faith. Yes. Yes. I'm not letting go yes. of what God has given me. Yes. Hallelujah. I have an enemy out there, and if I don't fight because I think he's not there, that's yeah. his deception. Yep. Yep. I think there's no devil out there. I don't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. That ain't going to stop him from destroying you. Because you don't think he's there? Mm -hmm. my, my, you want to challenge him? I had a friend of mine was praying with me for, for a revival. He decides, you know, we were under just praying every morning at 530. He decides to go behind the stage at this church. And we hear him back there telling Satan, come on. Come on, Satan. Yeah. I say, nah, everybody was, all us, was about six men there. Is that dude crazy? <laughs> Ain't nobody told him to go and confront Satan. <laughs> what are you doing? We don't want Satan in our prayer meeting. <laughs> I mean, you're so macho. You think you can beat him with your flesh? What if he show up? What you gonna do? <laughs> what you gonna do if Satan does show up? Uh -huh. I don't think we understand what we're fighting against. I won't give him no credence, but it's the Lord. Yes. That says yes. he came to steal, kill, and destroy. Yes. Right. I don't need to call him. I need to call God. Yes. That's right. That's yes. it right there. That's right. He don't have no good thing for me. I'm in a battle. Say I'm in a battle. I'm in a battle. I gotta fight. I gotta fight. Now y'all telling me you gotta fight. You better fight. Yes. The Lord asked a young man in in, uh, in Isaiah six. I want you to go there for a minute. Man, I just wish I could just put all this in one big fat message for you and just do it. But it's just, I got to preach it every day this week. In Isaiah chapter 6, God called this young man and told him how bad things were. And the people weren't listening to him. And it was Isaiah. And I'm going to tell you something. If you never read the book of Isaiah, you really should. Just an awesome scripture. And even the Jews and some of the Muslims read it. Mm 
I just got this verse here. <clears throat> Let's just read it by verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted. You see where it is? Yes, yes. The train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphs, each with six wings. Those are angels. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, this is Isaiah, I am, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphs flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongues from the altar. With it, he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Let me tell you, the blood of Jesus has done that for you. Yes, yes. hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The blood of Jesus has atoned for your sins. Hallelujah. 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 So you can approach God. Yes. Hallelujah. hallelujah. You can see God. Yes. It says, Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I say, here I am, here am I, send me. Hallelujah. And God didn't waste no time. He said, go tell these people. They go on to give him instructions. Yes. Let me tell you something. You wondering, oh, the preacher's supposed to go do that. The preacher ought to go out there, yes. But you know what? That was a command in the book of Mark. And Matthew, it says, no, I send you out to go preach yes. this gospel. Yes. It's this gospel that gets Satan out of people's lives. Yes. It's the blood of Jesus and the cross of Christ. Yes, you need to preach it. Yes. You need to teach it. You need to tell your children. You need to tell your grandchildren, your neighbor, your friend. You need to go and tell them the good news. You don't have to live like the devil. You can turn your life over to Christ by the word of God. You need to say in your heart, God, send me. Send me to my neighbor, my friend, my co-worker. Send me to my family. Send me. That's what this church is about, a bunch of people saying, send me, Lord. Who is going to come and save your child? Send me, Lord. Yes, Who's going to come and save your neighbor? Send me, Lord! Yes, Lord God. Who's going to take the devil off the back of our young people in our community? Send me, Lord, to the high school. Send me to the junior high school. Send me, Lord. Equip me so I can fight in this battle. I want the full armor of God on me, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness. I want the shield of faith. I want the sword of the spirit. I want my feet shot in the preparation of the gospel of peace. I want it now. I want the shield of faith to quench the fiery guns of the enemy. And I want to get out here and fight. Yes. I'm not sitting down no more trying to enjoy my life when people are dying and going to hell. Come on, Jesus. What if it's my child? What if it's my best friend? And I get nothing. Say, send me, Lord. Send me, Lord. Stop trying to say how bad everybody is and don't realize you got a bad devil who's stealing souls every day while you sitting back and saying how bad it is. What are you going to do about it? Come on. Send me, Lord. Send me, Lord. Send me. Hallelujah. He said, what are you going to send me with? Send you with the gospel yes. Yes. of Jesus Christ. Yes. You say, that's all you're going to do? That's enough for yes. you to do. Yes. You can't give everybody money. You can't teach everybody the way you want them to go. But you can preach the gospel. Yes, Lord. And you can let the Holy Spirit do the rest of the work. Yes. Come on, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 You can stop saying, you know what? This world is going to pass. 
you can get up and do something. Come on. And you say, what am I going to do? I don't have no money. I don't have no time. But you got Jesus. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And you can give them Jesus. Yes, Lord. And you have given them all that they need. Hallelujah. If you think you got to give them more than that, you are deceived. Yep. Satan has put it in your mind that Come on. you can work miracles. I'm telling you right now, you preach the gospel of Jesus Christ Thank to you, all Jesus. creatures. Thank you, Lord. You say, send me. Lord, send me, Lord. Young people, say, send me. Yes, Lord. This is a young man. Send me. Send me, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 You know, they had people go out on the mission field, and they took their caskets with them, knowing they wouldn't come back. Come on, Jesus. They knew they wouldn't come back. But for the sake of the gospel, to get it to another community, to get it to another family, they were willing to die for. This gospel you preach is sealed in blood. If you don't believe it, but all the martyrs and all the people have died to preach it, I don't know what it takes for you to believe. I have blood on my hands because I wasn't saved. And I had a friend. He had a little Bible. A little bitty old Bible. I came to visit him. A bad Mr. Not good person. Anyway, I saw his little Bible and I thought it was funny. Man, what you doing? You got a Bible. Yeah. He said, dude, you were way ago. Yes. A few weeks later, he's dead. Young man. Somebody killed him. I never forgot. If I only knew Jesus then, mm -hmm. I could have told him something. Yeah. Come on, Jesus. I could have said something. Can you think of people you could have said something to? Come on, Jesus. Yes, it's okay Lord. now. But now I'm holding you accountable. You don't have to tell them with this word of preaching. Yes. yes. Jesus. So you say, Pastor, you ain't doing me no favors. No, I'm not. You heard this word? You're accountable for those souls now. Yes. Yes. Nobody told me anything. But I'm telling you. Hallelujah. Say, send me. Send me, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This battle is raging. It's not going to stop until he returns, that Christ comes back. So you shouldn't get tired. Let the Lord be your strength. Yes. Yeah. But you need to say sin. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 If anybody in you says, well, Pastor, I haven't given my heart to Christ. How can I go when I don't know myself? How can I preach a gospel that I don't even believe yet myself? How can I put an arm of God on when I've been trusting in my own strength and ability all my life? Come on. I ain't never trusted God. I heard him. I sometimes believe it, but I don't trust it. I don't hold on to it. I don't preach the gospel to nobody because I don't have a gospel myself. If you're in here and you say, Pastor, uh, what do I do? You come up here. You come and make a step toward God in faith. And the Holy Spirit himself mm -hmm. with prayer yes. will change your heart. And from then on, he himself will teach you. Thank you, Jesus. He will lead you to the right church, the right place to go, to learn more about him. He will lead you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you would say, I need to make that commitment because I definitely don't have the kind of fire in my gut to go preach to my friend, my neighbor. They're going to laugh at me. If you went here and you say, Pastor, I need to take that mask on me. I need to get myself right before God. So I can get my family right, my children right, my neighbor right. You say, is it that simple? I, I'm a witness, people. How many of y'all witnesses that is that simple? It ain't just my hand up. Look at the hands. These are witnesses can tell you that if you turn your life over to God, he will take it for you. And teach you what you need to know. Bring you to the place you need to go. Hallelujah. 
If you in here and you say, Pastor, I can't go because I don't know. I want you to get up out your seat as that music is playing and come up here. Come like I came. Run like I came. Don't hesitate. If you in here, you know who you are. I'm not saying you're not a believer. I'm saying you know you're not equipped to be sent nowhere. Say, send me Lord. Say, send me Lord. If you know you're not ready to go, if you can't get up out your seat, raise your hand. I send someone to you. Now, back, I'll come myself. Is that important? He said his grace would cover me. People, don't, don't, don't take this for granted. You're going to be accountable for this message when you walk out of here. That friend that held that little Bible I had, that he had, that I didn't preach the gospel to because I didn't know it myself. You know. Now you know. What you going to do with it? This is the same, but you want to be equipped. If you sit here and say, Pastor, I need to be a determined person. I need to be more equipped. I need to have the fire of the Holy Ghost in my gut so I have bravery, so I'll be able to go forward and do this and do that here. Come on up here. Come on up here and say, I need some more fire in me. Okay, y'all sit there. Come on. Sit there with this altar. Come. If you know you're not preaching to nobody, get about your seat. Come on. I wouldn't have this message today. You know, we love good feeling messages. I wouldn't have this one today if we didn't need it. We need this message. Come on, Jesus. Glory, 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 God. Come on, I'm going to leave that door open a little while longer. You don't have no excuses. You raise your hand, I come to you. Or you come on up here. Take this seriously. You're in a wall. Whether you like it, whether you know it or not, you're in a wall. Satan is not going to feel sorry for you. Satan will not feel sorry for you. Even a little baby just born. He is not going to feel sorry for that. He will take every soul he can get. Because his time is short and he knows he's going. But you don't have to go where he goes. If you all sing to him, we got another prayer to pray for you. Baby. But I just want, I don't want to condemn anybody. I don't want you to be fired up. Hallelujah. I think you got to give him everything. Give him Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give him Jesus. Yeah. Every day, give him Jesus. Yes. Yeah, at least going to come home for supper. Give him Jesus for the evening. People, y'all pray, y'all pray, y'all pray for so. You know children, you know friends, you know neighbors, you know people, you know they don't go to church, they don't even talk about God. You're not judging them, you just need to make sure that they're ready. Yes, you need to make you need to make sure they're ready. Yes. How many of y'all gonna do that? How many of y'all raise your hand? How many of y'all gonna fight? How many of y'all gonna say, send me, Lord? Send me, Lord. I want to see some hands. Come on, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. I'm gonna hold you to it. The Holy Ghost is the main one that sees your hands. Don't worry about me seeing you. He can see your witness. Yes, yes. When you go out today, you tell somebody. Don't let them put you down, tell you how you live. Say, that's right. That's how I live. But I'm trying to get it right now. Hallelujah. You don't need to be judging me. You need to know Jesus for yourself. You got to know how to talk to people. Tell them that. You need to know Jesus for yourself. Don't be looking at how I live. I'm doing the best I can. <clears throat> don't judge me. Find it for yourself. Glory find God. it for yourself. Hallelujah. Say, find it for yourself. Yes, find it for yourself. I'm going to tell you the truth. You can receive it or not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all stand up and get ready to pray.